Hey everybody, today we're gonna to be covering the five things that you need to check out and check before buying land and ranch, especially a ranch, here in the great state of Texas. If that's what you're into, if that's what you wanna know, stick around, we're getting after it right now. Hey, I am Kerry Fletcher, Land and Red. <laughs> hey everybody, I'm Kerry Fletcher, Land and Ranch Specialist here with MEMS Group. So look, this channel, if you haven't been to it before, is all about the ins and outs, the do's and don'ts, the skinny, the information that you need to know before deciding to buy land or ranch here in the great state of Texas. So if that's what you wanna know, if you wanna be informed, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, that way you're notified every time we put out a new video. And look, uh, I've put it out on some other videos. Let me just tell you, we've got some live ones coming up. So you're gonna wanna know when we're doing those live stream, I've got specialists coming on. I've got um, a land and ranch uh, attorneys, right? Real estate attorneys. I've got um, appraisal officers that's gonna talk all about ag exemptions. And then I've got a land and ranch lender specialist who's gonna be coming on and answering your questions. So you're gonna to wanna to be informed, you're gonna to wanna to know, you're gonna to wanna to be able to interact with us live, so go ahead and hit that subscribe. Now look, when you, someone you know, family member decides that they are ready to jump into this lifestyle with both feet, they've, they've watched the videos, give us a call, send us a text message, send us an email, heck if you want to, send us a note via Pony Express. We don't care any which way you wanna contact us, we've got your back. And look, I know it sounds sort of funny, like, oh, I don't know. You would be surprised how many times I get phone calls and they're like, this feels kind of weird, but you said to call. Look, don't worry about it. I get called all the time. So whenever you're ready, give us a call. Love to help you. Let's jump into it. Five things you need to check. So number one is easements. And let's start with a comment or a question that I had on one of my other videos to sort of kick this off. So Wayne Rios writes, is there any way I can legally get easements taken off the land if I want to purchase it? So first of all, let's discuss legally. I am not an attorney. I'm not, a lic I'm not licensed to practice law here in the great state of Texas. So I can't give you an illegal opinion on anything. But let's just take a look at contracts 101 or what an easement is and how that happens. So an easement is basically a right, a burden on the property. And basically it's, a, it's something of value that is owned by someone different than the seller or the uh, landowner, right? So someone who's adjacent to it, someone who has leasing rights, whether they be mineral or agriculture or whatever. So there's an easement on that particular property. Once you purchase it, eh, you have to, there's no legal process there. You can negotiate it, you can find ways around it. But what I advise people is, if that's a deal breaker for you, that person's easement for whatever it's gonna block you or prevent you from enjoying the land to the, the fullest, but you really think that this is a good fit, getting rid of and taking care of that easement is best done between the the seller the person who owns the land because there has to be an exchange of of um, there has to be an exchange of goods and services for that right if they're gonna give up that easement they have to give them something in return to make it a binding contract and again I'm not a, not not professing to be an attorney but one of the other things that you need to know as far as easements in, in the seller, you may not know it, uh, the seller's uh, representation, the agent, either may not know it or may not disclose it. So you really need to do the due diligence on checking easements and burdens and things like that through uh, the survey and the title. Okay, and we'll get into and we'll have good conversations about title, title search, and how to discover uh, potential burdens or easements, whether they be mechanical liens, uh, loan liens, uh, or whether they be uh, easements. But you wanna make sure that that's uh, free and clear uh, whenever you're purchasing it, especially if it's something that's gonna, going to potentially impact how you and your family wanna use it. 
So number two, number two thing that you need to check is utilities. You know, things like, does it have municipal water, whether it be a collective co-op out, out in the county, uh, or whether it be, you know, close enough to where you've got some city water out there, uh, whether you've got um, electricity, uh, natural gas, uh, internet, cell service, and then also uh, sewer. Now, <clears throat> uh, and then also like propane. Whenever you're dealing with land and land and ranch, sometimes you can get, you know, a, a municipal or a cooperative water service. Yay, that's a bonus. It's not a have to be, it's not a deal breaker. Uh, oftentimes the hardest thing to get is things like uh, natural gas, which that's okay, propane. Um, and there's a whole segment of the contract that talks about propane and how full the tank is and whether you're buying it full or whether you're buying it empty or, you know, don't worry about that. We got propane covered, but just know and understand that, that, that oftentimes when you're buying land and ranch, you're not going to have natural gas, but you've got propane and you've got the, all the appliances and everything that are going to be able to work off of it. A uh, sewer most, most, most are gonna run off of some sort of septic tank system. You know, how to, how to investigate to make sure that that's uh, adequate, that you don't have any, uh, you know, problems as far as your sewer, aff I mean, your uh, septic affluent into somebody else's property, that it's properly taken care of, but it's something that you really need to investigate. Uh, and then, you know, we're not there yet where we've got internet coverage through cell phone and everything else. So you need to be sure that you have that and that you check it out. Uh, electricity, I'm sorry, was the last thing, electricity. Uh, you know, not all places have uh, electricity, uh, but you need to be able to understand where your nearest tie-in is and how much it's gonna cost to, to get it in. So I would never say don't buy it uh, because it doesn't have electricity but just know and understand that, that you need to factor those costs and the time in of, of putting electricity in. Number three, the number three thing that you need to check is what are the groundwater ownership implications and what are the surface water uh, implications? So there's a couple of things. Let me talk about an example. My uncle just sold his land uh, to developers, right? And those developers, uh, did not, and it was right along the Brazos River, and those land developers wanted to get their water from the city, right? And so they worked out a deal, got annexed from the city, city's gonna provide the water from them. So my uncle retained the water rights. So now, that's a thing, right? You can actually sell land uh, and retain those water rights. Now those water rights can be done. So you need to check and make sure that that um, what water rights convey. And there's actual certificate. They, they don't generate new ones very often, but there'll be a certificate from uh, the Texas Department of Environmental Quality, TDECQ, uh, or TDEQ, that, that permits how much water, for what uses, what restrictions, you know, is it unrestricted, or is it for industrial use only, or is it for for um, agricultural use only, is it, is it multi-use? And then you'd be surprised, it's not, only, not always just the big places like the Brazos or the Colorado. Sometimes there's uh, these places that feed into those of these tributaries, uh, like um, you know, Little River uh, or, or um, Tayuga Creek. There's any numbers of them that are uh, controlled by those same permits, so you need to be able to double check it. Now, this the groundwater thing is something that's come up recently. And when we talk about water rights and land rights, recently is you know 20, 30 years, but something that that is recent. Parts of Texas, because it shares a common uh, aquifer, Edwards Aquifer is is like the the one that that most people think of when I'm talking about this. Because you have um, a, a, such a large population and so many people, say somebody has a thousand acres, you know, 20, 30 years ago, and they have 
they've been pumping out however many millions of gallons of water out of that aquifer. Well then they take that thousand and they subdivide it into hundred and then that hundred subdivides it into uh, tens. You can think if, if all of them were pumping the same amount of water out of it, it could get out of control very quickly. So Texas put in some regulations a while back about uh, permits and permitting for underground water rights uh, as these things get uh, subdivided. So if that's important to you, i.e. let's talk about utilities if you don't have access to water and you're going to need access to water we need to be sure and check on what are the restrictions for groundwater and uh, what can you get a permit or do you need a permit it's not applicable to say kind of that east of i-35 uh, where you have heavier rains better ground uh, water uh, access but uh, still it's something that you need to be aware of okay Number four thing that you need to check, the conditions. And when I say conditions, conditions of what? The conditions of the property. That means the condition of the fencing, uh, the exterior fencing. Uh, can you keep your animals out and keep uh, predatory animals like hogs and everything else? I mean, keep your animals in and keep those predatory animals like out, right? But then not only the, the perimeter fencing, and sometimes you need if you're going to run exotics or you're going to run uh, non-standard game or, or non-standard animals on there sometimes you may need uh, high fencing but then also interior uh, fencing is cross fencing if you catch some of my other, other videos you know you can't just set all your livestock out on your land and say go you know, your land needs to rest so you need to rotate your livestock from field to field whether it's Producing. You can eat up a lot of money or a lot of time either repairing or replacing rundown uh, buildings, outbuildings. So that the fencing, the buildings uh, have a lot to do with the value. And then finally, the fields, the condition of the fields. Uh, does it have stable grass? Do you have invasive uh, vegetation uh, such as the weeds or trees like mesquites or juniper uh, cedar, right? Uh, or invasive uh, weeds like golly, dewberries or you name it, right, uh, throughout it. So the condition of the fields, not only of the, the grass that's on it, but the soils uh, and the water. Uh, and then also when you're talking about conditions, the conditions of your tank, your, your water source for your animal. You know, is it good? Is it stable? Is it full? Is it deep? When was the last time they drudged it, cleaned it out, right? Because uh, you're gonna have if you're in Texas you're gonna have wet months and you're gonna have dry months and there's gonna be a time when you're gonna want that that tank to be as deep and as uh, repaired as possible and then number five the thing that you need to check that's what's called your carrying capacity your carrying capacity is basically a formula driven from uh, the potential for the, the grass the current grass that you have uh, the needs and requirements of the animal and the thing that, that the person who's going to be most responsible for help you calculating the carrying cost or to check and evaluate is going to be your local uh, ag extension agent. If you've caught some of my other videos, this is repetitive. I'll just say it again. Texas A&M uh, provides a tremendous service by establishing these outreach extension offices into every county across the state. And they're your go-to resource to educate yourself, understand uh, the do's and the don'ts of running an agricultural business and they're the ones who are going to help you calculate your carrying costs but that's something that you need to check so it's not unreasonable if you're thinking about putting in an offer you want to go uh, it's not unreasonable for you to sit uh, with your agent such as myself down with the ag uh, extension uh, officer or teacher and go through what you calculate, what you think the carrying costs are. What are, what are you going to want to do with this land and how are you going to best do it? So look, that's what I got for today. If you stuck around to this, I know you liked it. I know you liked this video. So go ahead and hit me that thumbs up. Reason being is it's important because if you liked it, if you wanted this information, I assure you there's hundreds, if not thousands of other people that would like this information that won't get it because of YouTube's algorithms. So if you hit that, it just helps spread the word, helps other people get this stuff. So whenever you, your family, 
anyone you know is ready to jump into this lifestyle, not just watch about it, not just daydream about it, when you're ready, go ahead and give us a call. Shoot us that text message, send us that email. Heck, if you want to, I know you know it's coming. Send us a note via Pony Express. Any which way you want to contact us, we've got your back when moving here to Texas. Thanks, and I'll see you later.